I'm Robin Clark. I'm here with my friend Jordan. We're going to talk a little Major League Baseball and the Atlanta Braves. Jordan, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. All right. So considering the Braves were one game away from the World Series last year, what are your hopes for this season? I mean, I wouldn't say it's World Series or bust, but it's close. I mean, they definitely, in order for me personally to be satisfied, they need to make the playoffs for sure and probably win the NL East. But the NL East is more than likely the toughest division in the, in the league this year. And the Mets have gotten a lot better. They got a new owner. Uh, the Nationals are a lot better, too. They signed a few guys, uh, Josh Bell, a couple others, that are that they're going to be really good. And they still have some really good pitching. The Phillies are good. They were a really good offense last year, bolstered their bullpen this year. So really tough division, but Braves still should win it. Um, and I think... I would say I don't think it's World Series or bust this year, but I think it is World Series or bust within the next, say, three years, three to four years. I mean, that's kind of what the window is looking like right now on the conservative side. And you, know, you got a team that's good. You need to win it all. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as an Atlanta sports fan, I'm sure you've kind of gotten used to getting close, but then not quite making it. How does that feel as an Atlanta sports fan to keep going through that in different sports with baseball and the Falcons and um, you know, like I said, other Atlanta sports teams. Yeah, like deja vu over and over again. It's fun to watch Georgia do it, but uh, everyone else is, uh, you know, my team. So, I mean, yeah, it, it was rough last year, 3-1 lead, you know. We had to win one game. That's it, just one game, and, uh, and couldn't do it. So, you know, but to be honest, because you are an Atlanta sports fan, you know, it's 3-1, Dodgers win, is 3-2, then you're like, oh, crap, this is, uh, you know, here it comes again. And you just, you know, you think, surely it can't be true again, but but it was, you know. So, you, uh, I, I guess, I guess being good enough to be one game away is a good thing, but, uh, but, because you could be Cleveland, but, <laughs> which I guess they're good at basketball, but, uh, you know, there, there's other cities out there that, their teams are, are no good at anything at all. So we're not one of those, but, uh, but yeah, the heartbreak, the heartbreak is real. What do you think the Braves have to do to get over that hump? I mean, they're just young. They're just young, which is a good, you know, a good thing. It's better to be young than old, but the experience will, uh, will play for sure. And this year, the Dodgers are just, I mean, it's not fair. <laughs> Baseball's a rigged game in some aspects anyways because of how the money works. So, like, the, the Dodgers' payroll is just unreal. I mean, they just signed Trevor Bauer for more money than the entire Pirates team gets paid. So, you know, they're paying Trevor Bauer, I mean, he's the starting pitcher they signed this year, more money than the entire Pirates' payroll. Um, and so, you know, it, it's, it's not a fair game. But at the same time, you know, that's, that's why – you can put some rules in place like a salary floor and things like that to help, but you know, the Dodgers are committed to excellence and, and they clearly have the best team in the league. So, I mean, the Braves got to get over that hump and, and, you know, to get there is going to take some big performances, but the Braves have the talent to do it. There's no doubt about that. So speaking of rules, there's a new rule um, in spring training this year where as long as the pitcher has pitched 20 pitches, you don't have to get three outs. What do you think about that rule? Look, I mean, for spring training, it makes some sense uh, for a few reasons. One, I mean, part of the part of spring training is getting the guys ramped up, you know, getting them their arms warm in a, in a healthy way. Uh, and so getting them out there, thrown out there where, you know, they're just getting beat up. I mean, you got to bring another pitcher that you've already had a set plan in for in, you know, throws everything off, if that makes sense. So in order to protect the guy's arms, it makes a lot of sense. Because, you know, you get somebody out there, they throw 50 pitches, you're like, well, crap, now i got to burn more arms that I already had a set plan for them, them to get ramped up and for them to get their arms healthy to go through a, a season that's, you know, long, especially for pitchers, you know, I mean, that's that's a lot of a lot of taxing on the arms. So getting them warmed up well is, is a good idea, and, and this will help, help you even plan that. So, I mean, I, I think it's a good call. So this upcoming season is the second season that the MLB will play in a pandemic. What do you think they can take from playing through last season um, after the pandemic started that will help them this season as they continue to navigate safety protocols and things like that? 
Well, it's exactly that. They kind of plan a roadmap this time. It's not like we're making it up as we go along, which is kind of what it was like last year. I mean, the big thing after the end of this year is going to be the uh, new collective bargaining agreement. So you're going to be looking for things like a, a universal DH and stuff like that that they had last year moving forward. And you can say, look, you know, 2020, this is something that we did. But now 2021, we're not going to have the DH. So there, and there's a few things like that that they did last year that you know they're not necessarily doing this year that are going to be discussed at the CBA, depending on what the players want and what the owners want. So you're getting, you know, as opposed to rule changes that you may want, you're saying, look, we've already done this, right? Um, so there's that. And then the protocols of, look, we've kind of figured out what the process is and what we got to do to get into every game is a, it's definitely a positive thing and it hopefully can run smoother and not have big team outbreaks like we did last year. Last year, there was the Marlins had one, Cardinals had one, you know, it happened a few times where, you know, teams had to couldn't play games because they couldn't field enough players to actually play the games because of outbreaks. So, you know, we have the opportunity to avoid that this time because we know what we're doing. How do you think the new CBA will alter Major League Baseball? We'll see. I mean, anytime there is one, it's going to be a big deal. I'm, you know, I'm concerned that the two sides won't be able to reach an agreement and we're looking at things like strikes. Um, I hope that doesn't happen. And, and it, and, you know, hopefully it won't. Um, but, but the two sides are pretty far apart right now and have been kind of button heads over the last few years. Um, especially with the COVID and, and how to do the COVID season and things like that. And, uh, you know, owners didn't want to play as many games. The players wanted to play. You know, it was, there's a lot of tension right now. So, you know, how it affects baseball, we'll see. But, you know, it's definitely going to have a huge effect. And uh, it's pretty, I mean, most people are pretty sure that, that the Universal DH will come into play. You know, 2021 will more than likely be the last time you see a pitcher hit in Major League Baseball. Well, thank you so much. I've loved, you know, getting to talk spring training and the Atlanta Braves with you. Yeah, it's, it's been fun. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can go win one. I'd like to put some rings on some fingers, that's for sure. Absolutely. How do you think the new CBA will alter Major League Baseball? We'll see. I mean, anytime there is one, it's going to be a big deal. I'm, you know, I'm concerned that the two sides won't be able to reach an agreement and we're looking at things like strikes. Um, I hope that doesn't happen. And, and, it, and you know, hopefully it won't. Um, but, but the two sides are pretty far apart right now and have been kind of button heads over the last few years, um, especially with the COVID and, and how to do the COVID season and things like that. And, uh, you know, owners didn't want to play as many games. The players wanted to play. You know, it was, there's a lot of tension right now. So, you know, how it affects baseball, we'll see. But, you know, it's definitely going to, have a huge effect and uh, it's pretty I mean most people are pretty sure that, that the universal DH will come into play you know 2021 will more than likely be the last time you see a pitcher hit in Major League Baseball. I'm Robin I'm here with my friend Rachel we're going to be talking a little Major League Baseball and spring training first off Rachel how are you? I am good. I'm in St. Louis and it's 65 degrees and sunny here. So we are loving it. Early spring. There we go. Much better weather than we have here. It's been pouring all day. So, oh, really? That's not usually the case between St. Louis and Florida. So <laughs> it's a win for us. Uh, absolutely. So speaking of St. Louis, I know you're a big Cardinals fan. What are you hoping that their season is like this year? Oh, man. And we, yeah, huge Cardinals fan, grew up a big Cardinals fan. Um, you know, we have like a legacy kind of for being a championship team. We have how many World Series titles. So I think growing up a Cardinals fan, anytime that they didn't win the World Series or didn't make it to the World Series or deep in the playoffs, it was like, oh, well, this is the worst thing ever, you know, like there's just been that expectation set that we're a playoff team. We're going to go deep in the playoffs. So I think that's kind of it heading into it. And then after last year being such a weird season with no fans and stuff like that, people are ready to have their baseball back here. That's mm -hmm. for sure. So speaking of last season being a weird season, what do you think major league baseball can take from having already been through one season during the pandemic as they prepare for this next season? Yeah, I mean, I think kind of like all the sports have that they're just going to, you know, have to adapt and um, 
like it came out this week. I think the Cardinals are going to allow maybe 10,000 fans or something to start. And um, I think it's just kind of like, you know, easing back into it. You know, you don't want to get too greedy too early and then have incidents or outbreaks and stuff like that. But if you can safely, you know, get 10,000 people in and out of the stadium, then, you know, people are going to be excited for that. So I think just, yeah, finding a way to protect people, protect the players. Um, but hopefully, yeah, just have a great season and, and make it feel a little bit normal again. We are all, we're at the one year COVID mark. So we're all kind of like, really yearning for some normalcy yeah and how do you think sports help bring back that sense of normalcy what is it about sports that make people feel connected during this crazy time I think just the fact I mean for one that we've even had them you know I mean I think last year the moment I realized that like oh man COVID's a real deal was when they canceled the NCAA March Madness I was like, they canceled that whole tournament, you know? Um, And so that was kind of the moment when it sunk in, like, oh, wow, this is serious. Um, But then after that, you know, getting to go through, you know, an NBA season and the end of hockey and and all that stuff, um, for one, it gives us something, I think, to look forward to also in a time where you know, we couldn't really be around people and stuff. You know, you're still kind of connected through your sport to your city and you're connected to the other fans, maybe all across the country and stuff like that. Like I know personally, my family's big hockey fans. So St. Louis blues fans. Um, and my brother lives in Canada, my brother and my nieces and nephews. Um, so I haven't seen them in over a year. It's been really hard, but, um, we are always, you know, in a group chat talking about the blues games and even, and then my nephews are such big hockey fans. So they're telling us about their favorite players and all that. So I think it just gives you something to look forward to and be excited about, you know? Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate you taking time to talk to me today. Definitely. Yeah. Let me know if you need anything else. Yeah. And how do you think sports help bring back that sense of normalcy? What is it about sports that make people feel connected during this crazy time? I think just the fact, I mean, for one, that we've even had them, you know, I mean, I think last year, the moment I realized that like, oh man, COVID's a real deal was when they canceled the NCAA March Madness. I was like, they canceled that whole tournament, you know? Um, And so that was kind of the moment when it sunk in, like, oh, wow, this is serious. Um, But then after that, you know, getting to go through, you know, an NBA season and the end of hockey and and all that stuff, um, for one, it gives us something, I think, to look forward to also in a time where, you know, we couldn't really be around people and stuff. You know, you're still kind of connected through your sport to your city and you're connected to the other fans, maybe all across the country and stuff like that. Like I know personally, my family's big hockey fans. So St. Louis blues fans. Um, and my brother lives in Canada, my brother and my nieces and nephews. Um, so I haven't seen them in over a year. It's been really hard, but, um, we are always, you know, in a group chat talking about the blues games and even, and then my nephews are such big hockey fans. So they're telling us about their favorite players and all that. So I think it just gives you something to look forward to and be excited about, you know? Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate you taking time to talk to me today. Definitely. Yeah. Let me know if you need anything else.